Good morning, and welcome to our service at St. James of the second Sunday after the Epiphany. We have no one here in our nave, but we're glad you're with us via video and Facebook, and uh, looking forward to having some worship time with you this morning. Our service, if you have your prayer book at home, begins on page 355 in our Book of Common Prayer, or if you've got the uh, copy of the bulletin as Jennifer James, our uh, church assistant, uh, sent to you, you can use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of your hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, and we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now have this morning's readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and he lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And he got up and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay down there until morning. Then he opened the door of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son? He said, Here I am. Eli said, 
What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything. He hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 from 17. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand to count them all. My lifespan would need to be like yours. Our second reading this morning comes from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? and that you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel, Jesus answered. Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened 
and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you consider yourself an ordinary person? Would you say you are somewhat average, generally speaking anyway, as a human being? I guess I feel like I'm pretty ordinary. I mean, I know that I'm unique in the many ways God created me, but I don't think I'm so different from most others. I guess I would say I was ordinary, except for what I mentioned earlier. What makes me truly unordinary is the unique fingerprints of God that are all over my spirit and who I am. We find ourselves in this season of epiphany, the kind of an interlude season stuck between the glitter and excitement of Christmas and the soon-to-come sober season of Lent, with its traditions of penitence, prayer, and self-reflection. This is a kind of a plain and forgotten season we call ordinary time. Ordinary time sounds kind of drab and uneventful, kind of like our landscape we have outside in this winter time. But actually, it's not an eventful time at all. It's actually the most eventful of times because during this season of ordinary time, over these next few weeks, we will look at all of the things that God is doing in our lives and in all the world around us to make them into anything but ordinary. Because when we let God into our lives, when we open ourselves up to the power of the Holy Spirit, things go from ordinary to extraordinary. Let's look at this story we had this morning about Samuel. This young boy, Samuel, by most accounts, is ordinary and plain as they come born to a poor man and poor, poor woman who were both very old in age. They were so excited about the birth of their son that they gave him to Eli, the high priest, as a dedication of thanks to God for allowing them the honor of parenting they gave their son to someone else to raise. I was going to say, I remember when I was a parent and that might have been a good deal sometimes, but that's not true because I love my children and when have given up one moment of being their parents. But at any rate, Samuel's parents pull off the deal and Eli raises this ordinary boy, Samuel. However, God calls Samuel and makes his life extraordinary. God takes ordinary people, Samuel's parents, Samuel, Eli, and makes them into something very special. Likewise, in John's account of the calling of the first disciples, Jesus' appearance apparently was so unremarkable and so ordinary to everyone who saw him that John the Baptist had to point him out. And after he did, then the people started listening to him and following him, and then something extraordinary happened to them. Perhaps what Paul describes in our New Testament reading is the most startling revelation of them all. Ordinary human beings are members of Christ. Their bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. In all three of these incidents, the extraordinary was not at first apparent. To start with, both Samuel and Eli misunderstood the voice of God in the middle of the night. Paul, in his letter to the church in Corinth, rebuked the Christians who had lost sight of their dignity and of their own self-worth in Christ. And even Jesus, early in his ministry, is seen as nothing new, 
Nothing different. He's just an ordinary guy from Nazareth. Initially, even John's disciples could see nothing unusual or special in Jesus. Because we are, all of us, generally fixated on the obvious, on the surface, on what we see at first glance. We don't always take the time to look beneath the surface. So we tend to often miss the extraordinary in what we see as ordinary. We often miss the voice of God in the ordinary things that we do each day. Those ordinary things that have the potential to result in extraordinary experiences. Just ordinary things with ordinary people, like being with our children or grandchildren, with whom we have an extraordinary opportunity to direct and to guide and influence through all the regular ordinary things you do with them in your life. Ordinary things with ordinary people, like those we work with or serve alongside of in some capacity. They are our friends and associates. They are just ordinary relationships, and yet we have the opportunity to make them extraordinary relationships if we are willing to consider how, in God's name, we can serve God through them. Just ordinary things with ordinary people. Our ordinary relationships full of just ordinary moments. And yet when we look back at the sum total of all those ordinary times that were a part of our lives, we see them as the most extraordinary moments of our lifetimes. Those special times with special people that we often don't recognize at the moment that we're in them. We often do not recognize Christ in the thoughtful people whom with we work or the honest people whom we do business, the understanding people who help us in simple ways, the ordinary people with whom we come in contact with, although socially distanced, every day of our lives. Epiphany, or ordinary time, is a good time to retune our ears that we might better hear the voice of God in the world around us. It's a good time that we might refocus our eyes, that we might better see God working in and through and all around us in the people we know and the lives we lead. We must look beyond the ordinary and mundane and every day and seek the blessings and opportunities for blessings that God brings us all the time, all around us, in everyday situations, in routine circumstances, is where the Spirit of Jesus is waiting for us to intercede. Jesus said, follow me. And we have to turn to see who it is who's talking to us, for we may not recognize him. Might we say, here I am, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. That was Samuel's response, and I pray it can be mine as well. Please pray with me. Lord, where where will you use me in the mundane, everyday, ordinary moments of my life that are made extraordinary by your will for me? Make yourself known in the small moments that I might be your disciple. In Jesus' name, amen. And together, let us make a statement of our faith with the words we find in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now say prayers for our church and our church family using Prayers of the People, Form 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael and Glenda, for this gathering, for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for the peace of goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for members of this congregation, especially Jim, Bill, Sarah, Catherine, Celia, Jean, Anne, Carolyn, and John. I ask your prayers for our family and friends, Joe, Saxby, Ed, Walter, Clint, Samantha, Emily, David, Nan, Marcus, Mary, Audrey, Stacy, Samuel, Michael, Honey, Marianne, Bob, John, Crystal, Gary, Marty, Carla, George, Julianne, Jane, Denise, Margaret, Meg, Eric, Richard, and the family of John Meacham. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify God in our own day. Please also keep in your prayers our active military personnel, Samuel, Hunter, Marcus, Seth, and Andrew. Pray for those having birthdays at St. James this week, Andrea Peacock. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of the Virgin Islands and its Bishop Ambrose. We pray for the companion diocese commission. We also pray for St. Simon Simon Peter, Pell City, and St. Peter, Talladega. Throughout the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us unto life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. I have just a few announcements today. Again, glad to have you with us in our video service today. Um, we have another video service that we're doing now. It is Wednesdays on our Facebook page. It is a live prayer service taking the place of the prayers of the um, healing service. We just call it Prayers of St. James at noon. And um, you can join us then. It's a very casual atmosphere. We will just be saying prayers for folks in our church, our families around the country. We encourage anybody to tune in to that time. You can either send in some prayer requests um, through the comment box or pray at home along with us um, and help keep us informed of what's going on with folks' lives in this life, in this parish right now, and, and who needs our prayers. Uh, other than that, we will not be gathering within the church again until, I guess it's the second Sunday in February. Um, we would probably have started up at the first Sunday, but I'll be on vacation out of town the first, the last Sunday in January and the first Sunday in February. Uh, I'll send you out an email about that and who you can contact should you have a uh, pastoral need or any other needs here in the church. That's all I really have. Certainly do miss you all. I can't wait till we can all get back together. I understand uh, schools are going to be uh, out again for a short time while things kind of get tampered back down and, and maybe the numbers start lowering. So I hope that we're doing the right thing here at St. James. I'm sure we are. Why don't we finish up with a prayer? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones, in your heart, and in your home, this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go out into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, I'm ready when you are.